Hey girl. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Butcher Box. So I know a lot of you guys want to hear about Ginny Barncat and how she's adapting to the farm. So we're going to do my evening chores tonight with my sidekick here, Ginny Barncat. And I'll also try to explain why she and Toby Dog have a very interesting relationship. Hey, Mr. Toby Dog, how are you doing? Shut this off so I don't get myself zapped. I just got done working my day job for the day. Sun's already going down. I still have a whole bunch of projects I still need to do. We're definitely getting to crunch time on the farm. That's for sure. What's going on there, Mr. Toby Dog? Huh, buddy? How are you? Did you have a good day today, pal? Oof, you got dusty. You've been lying in the dirt all day, I can tell. Dirt dog. How are you doing there, chickens? These guys are getting to be more and more mature pretty soon. The gentlemen are gonna go off to the freezer and the ladies will join the full laying flock. Hey, Carmen, how's it going, girl? Where are your kids? Yeah, Carmen and her kids are kind of separated. They've uh, fully grown up at this point. We do have one task I'm gonna to try to accomplish tonight. And that is I'm gonna finally try to start to move the ducks that have been living inside this coop out and I'm closing it down for the year. And I'm gonna try to get the runner ducks as well as my pasture hatch ducks all to move into the duck house. I think they're gonna be ready. The other ducks have gotten used to their ramp at this point. And so I'm actually using their old ramp as a barrier. My goal is gonna be to herd the new ducks in through here, push them up and into the duck house. Hey, General Washington. How's it going, buddy? As you can see, they're out in the pasture right about now. Marking your territory, eh, bud? Yeah, the ducks have been coalescing more and more lately into one big flock. So this shouldn't be too hard. This is the older flock. That's the younger flock. These guys are used to going in the house. We don't have to wait a little bit before it gets uh, dark before they actually start going in. Our geese have coalesced into one big group of geese. A couple of factions there. We got our outsiders. We got our young geese. We got our older geese. We got the buff geese. But as you can see, they all hang out together as one group of geese. I owe you guys an update on the hive situation. That'll probably be another future video. Toby's waiting for his dinner. Molly's been hanging out in the house. Pablo's also waiting for Toby's dinner. You know, one of the things I've done recently is I used to top Toby's food with like wet dog food. Now I actually use wet cat food. That way that's usually what Pablo's eating. So it's actually much healthier for him. You know, it's always incredible to me how Pablo and Toby have become best friends. You know, they really do care about each other. They really are very sweet and tender with each other, which I didn't always think was gonna be the case. When you watch Toby with the barn cats, you can see that he's straight up bonded to those barn cats. They are a part of his pack. The birds are things that he protects, but the barn cats are things that he loves. You know, I think back to when Toby Dog was a puppy and Pablo really didn't like Toby Dog at all. Like Toby's puppy enthusiasm just drove Pablo absolutely nuts, given that he's a cantankerous feline. But with a little bit of time and a little bit of adjustment, I think they got to be good friends. And now, you know, it's so common to see them hanging out together. You know, Pablo taking the high road, Toby taking the low road, yeah buddy. Which is really good to see. But then when it comes to our other two barn cats, I know I still have a little bit of work to do. Molly barn cat is terrified of Toby and wants nothing to do with him, generally speaking. Ginny barn cat though, she's gotten kind of curious lately. Like Molly will see Toby, but she will absolutely go the other way. Even though Toby just presents himself as friendly, and kind of goofy. But Molly, she's just like, nope, I don't want anything to do with that dog. Not at all. But meanwhile, Ginny is in exploring mode. She's had a lot of adventures lately, hanging out with the chickens. It's pretty adorable to watch. She's not sure if they're predators or prey, if they're play friends or something else. She's still sort of struggling with what's the purpose of all of these chickens. She generally knows enough to steer clear of the geese and the ducks know enough to steer clear of her. But the chickens, it's kind of a touch and go and it's, it's definitely a clash of two cultures. When it comes to Mr. Toby Dog though, Ginny and Toby, I don't know, they've been interesting the way they've been interacting together. Toby comes at Ginny a little too aggressively. She won't freak out. Toby knows to be on good behavior, right? Sit, we stay in good behavior. Here, I'll give you a treat. And Ginny, I'll give you a treat, come here. Yeah, the way I've been trying to make them friends is just by proximity. 
The more time they spend around each other, I think the more used to the, each other that they get. Ginny starts to realize that Toby isn't a gigantic monster that's gonna eat her. And Toby realizes that she needs to be played with delicately, kind of like the way you play with Pablo. I'm pretty confident that eventually they're gonna be friends. Molly, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> oh, Toby, did Molly hurt your feelings? Yeah, buddy, you gotta get used to these gals. They're a little rough and tumble. <laughs> Sorry, bud. In case you're wondering too, Molly and Ginny haven't had any issues with the electrical wire. You know, it's off right now, so there's no danger in touching this right here. But if they were to hit that top wire up there, they would feel that. But notice how she's smart enough to like stand close to it, but not quite hit it. That's that natural kitty cat instinct. Ow, that's, those are your claws, girl. <laughs> Ginny, Allison's gonna be so mad when she finds out that you've been pooping in her garden. She's not gonna be happy at all. Pablo knows this lesson and knows that you're not supposed to do that sort of thing. But you, I don't know. Hopefully Allison won't mind too much because uh, her garden's kind of down to the last of the fall dregs. We haven't had like a hardcore killing frost yet, but that could happen at any day now. It's six o'clock right now and sun's already setting and it's still only like 54 degrees. So uh, winter is coming, my friends. Now, before I put the ducks to bed, let me just tell you about today's video sponsor, Butcher Box. You see tonight, our dinner is coming from my friends over at Butcher Box. They just sent us an awesome new box of food and I'm so excited to cook from it. As a lot of our regular viewers know, I'm a huge fan of ButcherBox. You can experience the amazing feeling of having a freezer full of high quality meat delivered right to your doorstep. And when that ButcherBox delivery shows up, it's always in perfect frozen condition. That's fresh out of the delivery box. When things don't go according to plan or whenever you need a great tasting meal you can trust, ButcherBox is in your corner. Get the ground beef members love, 100% grass fed and grass finished, for free in every order for the life of your membership. Allison's working at the hospital tonight, so dinner is just me and Lil Barn Cat. That's why I'm treating myself to one of my famous cheeseburgers with homegrown salad greens and eggplant. Unfortunately for Lil Barn Cat, she has to settle for her cat food. Butcher Box sources from farmers and fishers who meet the highest standards for quality. You choose your box and delivery frequency. They offer five boxes four curated options as well as the popular custom box so you can get exactly what you and your family love. Now that is a good burger. If you want to sign up for Butcher Box, click the link down below in the description of this video and you can get free ground beef for life. You'll get two pounds of 100% grass-fed ground beef for free in every box for the life of your membership. It's a great deal. That was really good. Thank you Butcher Box and now let's get back outside to go lock up those ducks. Whoa, watch this. We got some goose chaos going over here. Right now, the ganders are trying to vie for supremacy to say who's the lead. You know, traditionally, our lead gander was Justin Finch Fletchley, who is that goose, the white goose all the way in the front there, walking towards the water. But lately, this big Toulouse gander and that big Toulouse gander are starting to take sort of superiority. It's gonna be interesting to see how it all nets out. I know the one goose who's not gonna be the superior goose is Lenny the goose. So Lenny is our little wobbly friend. <laughs> He's more of a goose mascot on the farm than an honest to goodness breeding goose. You know, right now I'm actually in the process of making the decision on which geese I keep and which geese I cull for selling on the farm and uh, I got some tough choices ahead of me, but I know that I'm just not gonna have the heart to call Lenny there because he's just too darn adorable. Every once in a while you need a mascot on the farm. What are you doing in here, little chicken? All ducks go to bed! All ducks go to bed! All ducks go to bed! So now as you can see, most of the ducks, plus Carmen's kids, or at least most of Carmen's kids, have put themselves to bed properly. This is where it's gonna get interesting because now I have to convince the other ducks to come to bed. But as you can see, they're all a little confused and annoyed, but they can't get into their house right now, which was by design. See, if I had them in there, I would have had to like pull them out of the house. Now all I have to do is just sweep them up and herd them into this house. I hope this ramp becomes a good tool to keep them where I want them. A net like this is arguably the most useful tool in duck farming. All right, ducks, let's go. Come on. 
If you want to go that way, you can. Uh-oh, I split the flock accidentally. I'll let them regroup past the brooder house. Oop, they're going back to their old house. Now the trick with duck herding, I'm finding, is going slower is better. I want to eventually get them into that corral that I have, just like you're seeing. And now, slowly coax them up. Here we go. Oh, almost. Come on, guys. So that round was a little bit of a failure. I might try to do this in two squads. We have the remainder of the pasture ducks. Just follow that chicken right there. There you go. Just stay on the ramp. You don't have to get off the ramp. That's the thing. Up the ramp you go. Nice job. There we go. And you two, out from underneath there. I'll see if they figure things out. Let's get them this next pass around. Hopefully they figure this out. All right, we're gonna try one more attempt with these runner ducks before I open this thing up and start catching them by hand. See, they automatically go to their nice familiar home. I'm gonna get these three in there as well. All right, last two. You go. Good night, all the ducks. Yeah, that was like the harder way, but I probably could have done 50 laps with them and they still wouldn't have gone up that ramp. Unfortunately, that way is always more stress for the animals and for the animal keeper. But sometimes you gotta do that. It does make me wonder if I'm ready for cattle though, because I can't just catch cattle with a net and carry them into the house if they're not doing what I want them to do. So we'll see. What do you think, Toby Dog? I know what you think. He just wants his supper. All right, let's lock up the other birds and we'll feed Mr. Toby Dog. Come on, chickens. Let's see the last couple stragglers here. Most of our chickens are really good at putting themselves to bed at night. There's always this couple of three or four who always try to roost on the door before I kick them off to send them to bed. Hi, night chickens. And then the silky chickens are always easy to take care of. They always put themselves to bed. Gets dark early these days. Like I said earlier. Winter's coming. Good night, other chicken flock. Not sure if it looks that beautiful on video, but it's a beautiful sunset. You know, in the summer months, this time of night is like really late for me. <laughs> like usually I'm trying to wind down. This time of year, it's kind of nice. I like to linger. What's this? Hey, Jeannie Barncat, get out of there. Toby, you can't let them adopt Pablo's bad habits. Ginger Cat, get out of there. Okay, buddy, here you go. Oh, you're starting to warm up to him, huh, Ginny? Well, isn't that surprising? <laughs> Not for you. <laughs> I think Toby and Ginny are gonna be friends eventually. Just gotta give it some time. 